what's going on guys this is going to be a different kind of video so hold on i'll just start off with what happened my girlfriend she likes to smoke weed and she's been such a good little girlfriend i was gonna buy her some weed and i was gonna surprise her with the weed and this is how we entered into this conundrum I know some people who know some people, right? So I had one person reach out to their connect and the weed man was out of weed. Then I had another person reach out to their connect and this weed man was out of weed. And I had another person reach out to their connect. Same thing. So three weed men who were out of weed. And it got me to thinking, this stimulus money is stimulating a lot of stuff, even the underground economy. And it got me to thinking, how many people are blowing their stimulus money on strippers, escorts, drink, drugs? It really got me to thinking. Because one of the things that I find to be very interesting is when people get money, they do what they wanna do. Thank you. They don't do what they should do, they do what they wanna do. As evidenced by not one, not two, but three weed men who are out of weed. That tells me a lot. Years and years ago, I did a video about this guy who won the lottery. And they asked him what he was gonna do. And he said, I'm gonna get some hookers and blow. And the common man mindset is one of comfort and service. I'm gonna make a confession here. You know, I, I got asked when I was doing the disruptive male content, like, why do I have girlfriends? And typically, I'm gonna be straight up. I make more money when I have a girlfriend than when I'm just out here freelancing. Let me say this again. I make more money last year. Best year ever in my life. I had a girlfriend. I had a girlfriend. And one of the things that I am seeing is, and this is one of the reasons that I stopped the disruptive male content is, the incidence of not one, not two, but three weed men being out of weed. People don't want to do the right thing. They want to do what they want to do. And this is why the 1% owns 90% of stock. There is a reason. There's a level of focus, there's ambition, there's, a, there's an agenda, but right now, 2020 was a bad year for a lot of people. Bad, bad year. And this was the third stimulus check, and I guarantee you that there are some people who spent their stimulus money on weed who don't have a long-term emergency fund, don't have no money in the bank. They went ahead, dropped that money, smoked it up, and now they're back in the same position they were before they got the stimulus money. And, you know, I, I have an agenda. I want to create 100,000 corporate citizens and get 100,000 people to a business with a net profit of $250,000 and then teach them how to become asset-based millionaires. You know, I, I get a lot of flack because like one of the things that I'm being very illustrative of is telling you the truth so you can have a better perspective on money, money creation, and wealth generation versus these lies. There's a video on Savage Finance. I go ahead and check it out. You know, 90% of the stock market is owned by the 1%. So 
Half of America ain't even invested in the stock market. And the part of America that is invested, they don't have that much money. It is very, very illuminating. Very, very illuminating. So go to Savage Finance, check out that video. But it is apocalyptic that people don't want to do the right thing. And I mean, not one, not two, but three weed men are out of weed. I guarantee you the people who are smoking this weed, cause like, like I said, I'll dive a little bit more. One of the reasons that I keep girlfriends and eventually will have a wife is when you are not focused on women and you're focused on business, because currently I, I have a I have a girlfriend. I'm gonna keep a girlfriend, I'm gonna get me a wife. And most of you guys who love the stories, and this this is why I discontinued that stuff is I was giving you the aftermath. I wasn't giving you the pathway. I wasn't giving you the proper positioning because the reason that I was able to have sex with 27 chicks in one month, 2011, was I had a financial device that put 1.5 million in my bank account without me working. So I had plenty and plenty of free time to be indulgent. The average man could never do that because the average man don't have that kind of free time. You just don't, you don't have the free time to be banging chicks in the morning, banging chicks at lunch, at night. You don't have the time. And one of the things that, you know, after I did that, I did it. Been there, done there, got the t-shirt. I've never done it again. And one of the things that I want you guys to understand is you got to focus. You got to focus. This is why I got rid of disruptive mail. This is why I got rid of the other channels. And I am getting more emails about hustlers, Kung Fu life skills than I ever got. Cause I like, I'm not doing anything over there. There's no going to be no more courses. I'm not selling anything. I'm not promoting anything over there. It is the three, well, the three new sites. I am not doing anything over there at those things. And once again, if you have hustlers, Kung Fu courses, they're not going to disappear. You can revisit them whenever you want. Just log in. They'll be there. But the, the whole point of this, cause like it kind of blew my mind that the weed man was out of weed, not one, not two, but three weed men were out of weed. And then my, my, my people were like, yeah, this has never been a problem before. It's never been a problem before. People are using their stimulus money to rent cars. Uh, I know someone who was financially struggling this weekend. They're in Vail on the ski trip because the tickets were 239. Guess how they're getting there? Stimulus money. These are people who actually have been struggling financially and bam, here's some money and they're stimulating the economy. They're stimulating the economy. And I find it perplexing as a person who used to be broke, as a person who had no assets, as a person who had no cash flow, mentally, this doesn't make sense to me, but I'm not the average person. I don't even spend my paycheck. I'm like letting it stack up in my personal checking account. Cause I like having money in my life. Yet people who were handed some money 
are tricking off. They're being self-indulgent. Do you know that $1,400 could have started a business? Do you know that? $1,400. And also, there's another group of people. It was said that $53 billion went into the stock market after the stimulus checks came out. So there are people who are using this money to invest. Um, it is crazy when you look at the average person, when you look at, when you understand, when you peer into the psyche of the average person, there's a reason that the 1% has most of the money. There's a reason. If you don't believe me, go ahead and do the research and you will understand that most billionaires are married. Most billionaires are married. Most billionaires are married. And they're not married to the hottest chick. They're married to an average looking to pretty woman. Very few of them have hot wives. See, the reason that they're billionaires isn't because they chose to be billionaires. They're billionaires as a byproduct of their personalities. And I've seen it. The wealthiest guys typically are married. And, you know, from me having a girlfriend last year and making more money than I've ever made in my life, I understand why. Because when you're out here chasing women versus chasing dollars, you losing. You losing. I will never ever put a woman before my business. Ever. You want to know why? It isn't because I, I cannot have co deep capacity and love for a woman. That's not it. The reason is this business will take care of me in a way that a woman cannot. I will love a woman. I can be committed to a woman. I can enjoy the company of a woman. I can live with a woman. I can marry a woman, but I'm never going to put her before my business. Never. And many women who have children, they will understand that because they're not going to put you before their children because their children have priority and ranking. See, this is how the game goes. And essentially the girl that I have in my life, she understands that she's perfectly cool with that. Now we've, we've had this conversation. Hence the reason I was getting ready to get her some weed until the connects. <laughs> The connects was like, Houston, we have a problem. To, we have a failure to communicate. The weed man is out of weed. Weed man is out of weed. And it, it just got me thinking, how many of those people who are out there puff, puff, pass are smoking in an apartment that they haven't paid the rent on? How many of them are smoking blunts in cars that they're behind on the note? See, for you to become wealthy, you got to change your mindset. Like, you know, a few months ago, I spent 200K on two cars. I don't do that every month. Actually, that was a planned purchase. You know, when I first saw that Porsche 2017, could have got it then. But my money, and let me go ahead and give you, like I have goals, I have internal goals. Like I could go ahead and get whatever I want on credit. I could do that today. But my personal credit, and this is a personal mandate. See, I'm not using my personal credit for nothing, nothing. 
My personal credit is gonna stay pristine because I'm not gonna use it for nothing. And right now, business credit is about six months old and in about two years, I'm gonna be able to get whatever I want on business credit. And that's how I'm rolling. You know, I, I will have personal credit cards. I'll use them in rotation to keep them good. But once I start getting these business credit cards with these 50, hundred and two hundred thousand dollar limits that's the ticket because see i have once again i have internal goals like i could have paid cash for the porsche in 2017 but that would have hurt me that would have hurt me i would have really really felt that i wasn't where i needed to be so for me to get that porsche i had to increase my business revenues and once I hit that goal, I went out and got the Porsche. I've been wanting that Porsche since 2017. Could have had it, could have got it, could have went in there, filled out the credit app, drove it on out, could have did that. But see, I have discipline. I have goals. I have a system. And I was not gonna let that cash go, because once again, I have a personal philosophy. We don't finance cars up in here. I find it sad. I find it trifling to be beating on your chest. I'm a millionaire and you financing a Honda. Really, bruh? Really, sis? That makes no sense to me. None whatsoever. But I had a plan and I had goals and I had an internal system because like essentially uh, I could probably finagle or finesse that apartment complex I want to get in four years from now. But why, why, why four years? Because I want to be in the position to let that money go, but there's still money in the checking account. I have another personal philosophy. We don't, we don't take wild gambles. We don't spend all our money. We don't do that up in here. And year, you know, since 2017, because I had that great year into 2011 going into 2012, then it just dropped off. It just really dropped off. And I see sustained wealth and income for the next 10 years. And I plan to do a lot of things. Probably be married, probably have two children, probably will. Mick Jagger's my hero. Mick Jagger, 72! He had a kid at 72, he's 77 years old. His, his youngest kid is four, almost five years old. Mick Jagger was digging deep at 72, my hero. But I, I have a plan, I have a philosophy. And it is, it leaves me perplexed and how many people out here buying weed and they're behind on their bills? That don't make no sense to me. But this is why the average man doesn't have much because he has an average mentality. Like uh, a lot of you, um, I know you guys mean well. It's like, hey, I financed this property. Like, let, let me go ahead and give you the sauce. Let me give you the game. I want a million dollars passive income. So I am perfectly fine with putting 2.5 to 3.5 million into an apartment complex and financing it. Because I'll go in with a 25%, 30% equity stake, which means that 30 to 40% of the profits get to slide in my pocket and then the rest goes to servicing debt and paying taxes. I can live with that because based upon my calculations, that puts me, I'm not like excited at buying a rental property and you know, paying cash for a rental property because uh, my first plan was to do like 430,000 to 450,000 on the houses because you can rent those for 35 to 4K, right? So 4K times 12 is $50,000 a year. Um, my goals have increased. 
I want to be seeing, because essentially the way that I ran these numbers and I, I need to do some more research, but I get an apartment complex at 10 mil. It's going to cash flow gross revenues between 80 and 120,000 a month. And then there's going to be property taxes and there's going to be cost of, you know, running the business. But essentially after I make that purchase, it is my expectation to have after paying employees, servicing debt, paying taxes, about 400 to 500,000 in passive income. And then amp up my business where I can go ahead and boom, refinance that loan, go ahead and drop another two to three million into the property where I own 50% and get it paid off really, really quick. That's my plan because when I am 64 years old, I want to have the option and you know, honestly, my life ain't that stressful. My girlfriend doesn't, she, she actually cannot believe that I'm 54 years old. She cannot believe it. She said, you don't look like it. You don't have sex like it. You don't act like an old man, but I am an old man. And the reality is when I turn 60, I don't care if I still look like this, I'm going to be old and I want to have options, options. And if I want to at 64, it's like, Hey, you know, YouTube, you guys have been great. Appreciate you. But deuces, I'm about to be out. I'm about to sit back and enjoy my wife and children every day. I want to have that option. This comes from planning. This comes from discipline. This comes from having goals, setting some stuff up, not out here blowing my money on weed when I ain't paying my bills. That is crazy to me. But this is what people are doing. This is what people are doing. So the stimulus money is stimulating the economy, but people are making poor choices with the stimulus money. Some people are doing good things. Some people, I'm going to put this up in my long-term emergency fund. It'll be there if I need it. Some people are investing it, but a lot of people blowing money fast, big meat style. And I honestly think there's going to be another stimulus package. I honestly think there's going to be another stimulus package around the fall. I think it's going to, it's going to be another one. So we will see because unemployment is still high. People still struggling. So that is your update for today. Now, April, we're going to do the fast business boot camps, fast start program. It's going to be an eight week program. I'm going to be doing daily training 3 p.m. and zoom every day at 3 p.m. where you can ask questions. I'm going to have a format. And if you go ahead and get the art of holding, you get that. But April 1st, that is going to be a standalone product. It's going to be a separate product. So you can go ahead and get that. So you can go ahead and get the corporate toolbox if you want that. No, you get everything. You get the YouTube super creative because I'm about to go nuts these next two months with training and putting out information. I'm going to teach you how to do all, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff. But I'm going to do it in a very selective manner. But the links are below. And once again, April 1st, you will not be able to get the fast start boot camp unless you buy it. So, all right, hopefully y'all heard me. Hopefully y'all have peeped the game. Hopefully you have understood how the 1% or the 1%. It ain't cause they smarter than you. They just have more discipline. That's it. A little bit more discipline. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.